Welcome to a really quick, short bonus episode of the Animals at Home podcast. I'm going to keep this intro real short as well. If you haven't already been able to tell, maybe you heard through the grapevine or you can tell by the title of this episode, we are adding another podcast to the Animals at Home podcast network, and that is the Reptiles and Research podcast hosted by Liam Sinclair and Ellie Hills. Now, in this short bonus episode today, you'll learn a little bit about each of the hosts as well as what we can expect from their podcast. Now, just for you guys as a sort of a logistical point, this podcast will operate in the same way as Bryce Broom's podcast, Animals Everywhere on this network, meaning the audio will always be under the Animals at Home network on your podcasting platform. So if you subscribe on pod- on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any of those other podcasting apps, all you have to do is subscribe to the Animals at Home network and you will get all the podcasts right to your phone that are underneath this umbrella. If you want to watch the video version of the the podcasts that are on this network, then you go to the respective channels. So if you want to watch the video version of the Reptiles and Research podcast, you will go to the Reptiles and Research YouTube channel. Same with Bryce's podcast, Animals Everywhere. You go to the Animals Everywhere podcast YouTube channel to watch the video. So the videos will always be housed on their separate YouTube channels, but the audio will always be condensed on the Animals at Home network. Now, I think I'm going to start putting a little short indicator at the beginning of the title for the audio version. So there'll be an A-A-H prior to the title for all of my episodes, an R-R for Reptiles and Research, an A-E for Animals Everywhere, and so on and so on. That way you can quickly tell which podcast you're about to listen to. And if you do subscribe on Spotify, you'll actually be able to see the album art as well. And of course, the album art for each podcast is different. So Spotify seems to be one of the only applications that actually shows the album art for each episode. So if you do show up or if you do use Spotify, it's very easy to tell which podcast you're about to listen to. But hopefully you just want to listen to them all. And I'm not going to say anything else. Let's jump into this bonus episode so we can get to know these two a little bit better and learn what they have in store for us with their podcast. All right. Well, Liam and Ellie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. This is a special bonus episode of the podcast because we're going to be introducing a project that we're going to be working on together. Probably many of the listeners maybe already are aware of it because it's been out there already and it's um, I've, I've talked about it. Have I talked about it? Maybe I think I maybe alluded to it, but I haven't actually talked about it on the podcast. So super excited to get into that. But before we do, let's give some people some background on both of you. I think many of the people listening will be familiar with Liam, but maybe we'll start with Liam because there's probably some new people listening that haven't that aren't aware of you and your channel. So why don't we just start with your background in animals, what, what you keep, and we'll, we'll start there. Cool. So I'm Liam, and I run the YouTube channel Reptiles and Research. I keep uh, Mexican butt king snakes, a California king snake, uh, and a bit of dragon. And how long have you been keeping reptiles? I don't actually know. I think it's five five years now. I think. And the channel has been. Has it been two years now, or how long have you been had the channel? April 19th, 2020. Okay. So yeah, so two years. And uh, many people will be familiar with the channel, but maybe you could just give us a quick like two minute or one minute of, of what is on the channel, what sort of videos you're doing there. So reptiles and research, the premise behind it is basically uh, researching reptile topics at a deeper level. I did animal management as my degree at uni. So I'm trained just like Ellie is to look at studies and go into things on this deeper level so I saw a lot of YouTube videos on YouTube that concerned me that weren't necessarily correct so I thought I would throw my hat in the ring and try and address these but show it from a scientific standpoint and showing the studies and not everyone can actually look at a scientific study and be able to uh decipher it or even understand things themselves so I wanted to almost hold people's hands and almost spoon feed them this scientific perspective without kind of just going straight over the head so each of the videos are basically structured researching topics and uh addressing them more from a scientific point and correcting some poor long-held myths in the hobby as well Mm -hmm. yeah i'm just trying to think off the top of my head some of those myths you've done impaction with bearded dragons you've done uh, arborality in ball pythons what have been some other big ones that have really hit um you you reviewed the tub study with ball pythons yes there was a study that i went over in detail with the compared raw pythons kept in rubs uh racks versus vivariums i also have done a few uh with bearded dragon humidity and how you're not supposed to be like completely dehydrating them um that was a bit controversial um i've done a Think recently 
uh, what else you can feed snakes. You don't have to just feed this monoculture diet of just mice. So I was showing things like including chicks in the diet, um, varying the prey species, multi mammoths, gerbils, this and that. And I did another video comparing the actual nutritional composition of these and proving that chicks are not inferior prey items like people make them out to believe. So I've done bits and bobs, um, just reassessing things for people that don't mm -hmm. really know the reality. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fantastic channel. I know lots of people really enjoy your videos because it does bring it down to, to earth for many of us. And now, Ellie, you are a new face. If people have seen Liam before, maybe they're bored by him by now. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, for you, l let's talk a little bit about yourself. How did you initially get into keeping reptiles? Oh, I've been keeping reptiles now since I was like 14. So we're hitting over 10 years now. Um, I just have always been that kid who was into the weird and wonderful um, and I took on a rescue chameleon when I was 14. Um, and then since then, I just haven't stopped doing it. So and, it's been a long process. And you also studied, was it animal management as well in school? Or what did you do for, for school-wise? So I did the same degree as Liam um, in animal management. And then I took up one more and I went on and did a master's in applied to biology. So I'm a little bit nerdy. Great. Yeah, no, that's that, that's fantastic. And then tell me a little bit about your journey keeping reptiles. You started with the uh, rescue chameleon and, and how has it evolved from then to now? Um, I've, I guess my knowledge has just expanded because when I first started things like lighting and things like that, I just had no clue. Like I understood they needed a heat bulb UV, but I didn't really understand any of the science behind it. Um, and then I went from keeping um, with just plastic plants and things like that to now pretty much everything has like live plants and things like that. And what are you keeping now? Um, <laughs> I have a Jackson's chameleon. I have about 15 royal pythons at the moment. And then I've just recently we got um, three caliber pythons, um, which I'm very excited about. What, what, what are the what species is that? So um, they're a African species of boa. Um, they're also called like the two-headed um, python or the African burrowing python. So. Interesting. Okay, cool. Before we move on, I, I'd love to know about both of your, where, where you see your hobby going as far as what you're planning on keeping. So maybe we'll start with Liam. Do you have future interests or, or are you, I know you're working on some breeding projects and whatnot, but are there also species and, and do you have a vision for your reptile room? I have a... A, a kind of a want list of species that I want to work with the channel and whatnot. I would like to have all of the major species so that I can make geared content towards people, helping people with those commonly bread and butter species, so like a leopard gecko, you know, the corn snake, things like that. But there are also, I have a wish list of species that I want to work with for my own interests. Um, and that grows longer by the day, I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Ellie? I, I think I'm in the same boat. I want to, but a set, I want to move more towards things that just aren't commonly kept, but I think they should be. Um, so like chameleons, we keep chameleons, but they're species that are better suited for captive um, care, but we just, they're not in the hobby. And I think I want to keep things that are better suited that we just haven't discovered yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's 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 really cool. This is a tangent that I wasn't planning on talking about, but we will anyway because I saw your post um, <clears throat> a couple of days ago, Liam, about the expo that you went to, and I don't know if you guys went together or not, but I also mm -hmm. went to my first ex not my first expo, but the first expo since COVID yesterday because we haven't had any expos since COVID, and I, I kind of had the same sort of experience. Maybe maybe I'll get you to lay out what what you what your post said there, Liam, but it's the same sort of thing where you're just you are excited to go because you want to see the animals and you want to meet people. But then you kind of, when you leave, you're like, uh, I, I'm not so sure I, I, I actually enjoyed that as much as I thought it, I was going to. So maybe you could just lay out uh, what your thoughts were there. Um, well, one thing that, that I particularly noticed straight away was just the complete lack of species diversity. Mm -hmm. It was just leopard gecko, crest gecko, royal python, crest gecko, leopard gecko, royal python, crest gecko. Like you walk around and eventually you just go, I'm just going to skip that table because it's yeah. just the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and that's, that's just boring. Like I work with cresties at work and I think they're really cool and they're really cute and I like working with them. You go to this expo and you get to the point where you're like, oh, crested geckos, you get sick of seeing the same animal over and over again. 
and it's just a complete lack of diversity. And then when there is someone that has something, it's like, oh my god. And then there's people that like don't even they just walk straight past it because they're not even interested. And I think that there's welfare issues with how things are kept. And when you look at it and you know about welfare and you know what you're looking at, you completely understand why it's a major attack point for those that aren't in favour of the hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we are really helping ourselves by the way that's done. Yeah, no, I think I agree. Ellie, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think there were, it was quite difficult because some people, when they were doing the displays, I was like, yeah, no, that's fine. They had them in big setups. They had hides in there. Um, and then others, it was just so upsetting to see like a gecko in a little box with nowhere to go, just sat there with its eyes closed. And you know, they're like, oh, no. Yeah. And you kind of think, how long has it been sat in that box? Because a lot of people stay in the hotels. So, yeah, it's sad. Well, yeah, yeah, because you know that it's probably at least three or four days a lot of those animals are in those containers. And it is, yeah, it, that's the same sort of feeling that I got. And, and, you know, listening to you talk about wanting to be a little bit more diverse in your collection in the future, that's what made me think of the expo because I had the same experience yesterday. It's just like crested gecko, leopard gecko, ball pythons. And, and we, we do want to see more, but it, there's, it's hard to overlook the awkward welfare situation at an expo and you know i i, I saw somebody buy, buy a euromastix and these euromastix was like this tiny little like three inch lizard in this deli cup and and this person bought it and then they asked the person who who sold it to them what do i feed this baby and he said you know what i'm not actually sure i don't know what you feed that because he wasn't a breeder it was like a, a not not a wholesaler but like a pet store type table so they had a whole bunch of different species and and i thought that is just a bizarre situation that these people are going to leave with an animal that they probably know nothing about and they couldn't even extract the information from the person they were buying it from and it's easy to see how major of a target and easy it is for you know animal rights people to point out why this is bad i don't know yeah, why i went down that tangent but i just felt like it <laughs> uh, yeah I, 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 we were going to organize an episode just just talking about it i think it was just sent me to a rant to be honest but I, I just think there's probably a way to go about it to fix it, but actually getting people that to, to actually change um, is uh, another issue. The problem is we have is that people think, oh, don't don't address it, don't acknowledge it, and then suddenly um, it takes away power from the animal rights or something. Mm-hmm. They think just stick your head in the sand and it will go away sort of thing. Or don't address it, don't talk about this. But by not addressing the issue, the issues there to be attacked. I just don't understand the mindset. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I, I, com- I completely agree. Well, maybe I'll let you guys cover that in a future episode of your own podcast, which <laughs> we'll talk about in a little bit, and then that, that'll leave something for people to go and listen to. I, I would love to hear about how, because you guys were both in the hobby separately, keeping, and then I think you've known each other for a while, but I know that obviously now your hobbies have mixed and you have influenced each other on how you keep. Where Liam came at it, only a few years ago, but you came at it from like an extremely scientific minded and you were pretty hard lined one way, I would say even a year ago. Right. And I think maybe, I don't know if Ellie's influenced you at all and, and vice versa. Uh, does, does somebody want to jump in on how you guys have influenced each other's way of keeping? So there's a few things that I kind of, I, I kind of softened on like um, things like morphs. Um, I still don't like albinism. I'm prepared to die on that hill. But things like um, like things that are dominant and not necessarily, I think, aren't like a huge issue, I don't mind. Things like leopard, I actually really like. Um, OD, I thought was quite cool. Uh, so there's a few morphs I actually so do like. So you even like. know the slang terms now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, look what she's done to me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a few things I've softened up on. And I, I, I do actually, well, as, as well as working at work and working with it. Um, as a job as well so but yeah I do quite like some of the morphs but yeah some of that are still I'm on that hill still <laughs> yeah 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 and, and what about you Ellie has Liam influenced the way you keep it all I think um, he's like opened the door for me to understand the science behind the lighting and the heating because my love and passion in the reptile and the science world is behavior um, and so when everyone's going a T5 and a T8 and a deep heat on there, like, so it's been nice to have that person to be like, 
no no which one should i go for what's going to work best so yeah and and currently are you keeping in and you don't have to feel bad saying this or anything but are you keeping in a rack system that that is is more of the traditional morph breeder style or how do you keep it's half and half at the moment okay so um i've got some in bivs i've got half of them in enriched racking with the process to put them in bivs but um a lot of the roy pythons that i've taken on have come from um, racking style um so i'm slowly introducing them into that world of the enriched bivs compared sure. to just fl- like flinging them in if that makes sense yeah absolutely yeah so it's it, it is an expensive transition i'm sure if you have 15 royals to move them into vivs and it's got to be a slow process and and so did you when you were originally keeping because i i went through the same process with myself when i first got into snakes i was keeping it in not completely plain tubs like i still had i would say enriched tubs like you have but i was just under the opinion that that's 100 percent what you could do and it was kind of nice because i was like okay you can get more than one snake because it's relatively cheap is that was sort of your mindset as well and then you start kind of getting broadened on the scientific approach and go okay i gotta change some things yeah and i think at the time i when i entered the hobby i was um in talking with people that have been keeping broils for like years and they were telling me no this is absolutely fine this is great you're doing really good this is exactly how it should be done and then you kind of sit back and go actually I don't feel comfortable with it but I was that outsider that was saying it was wrong and everyone else was saying it was right if that makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah uh, no it it totally makes sense and I think it's kind of cool that you guys can combine those two sides of the hobby because the morph side like Liam said, there's some really interesting, cool morphs out there, but there's also some really horrible practices that are layered into that morph side, and there are ethical ways of doing it. So I think it's actually a good marriage of those two sides of the hobby. You know, the, the morphs do bring interest in, and people are fascinated by them, and you know, the, the different colors and whatnot is really cool. So if you can layer that into a more of an ethical style, which I think is exactly what you guys are doing, so that that's great. And you guys did actually do an episode on on the Reptiles Research Channel discussing morphs, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. It was so weird. People... It was like it was like a podcast episode, but like not a podcast because that wasn't a thing yet. Yeah, so, yeah. But weird, can, yeah. can you quickly lay out how you guys did it? Because I think it was pretty cool. So what we did was um, Ellie obviously her owns morphs and whatnot, and obviously likes morphs. And I obviously have been very no 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 to morphs so what we did is we actually flipped swap sides so that i made a for argument for morphs and ellie made an against argument for the ethics of morphs so we flipped sides so we both had to like own each other's arg- place if that makes sense and then we like address the topic from our uncomfortable positions if that makes sense yes yeah it's a great video so anyone that wants to go watch that they should because it's uh, it is a unique way of covering it plus in a way that doesn't turn into um hitting the ditch, you know, like most of these things on YouTube or a lot of them do. So why don't we talk about the project? Because that's a good uh, segue into the podcast that you guys are going to be working on. So maybe does one of you want to introduce the plan for the podcast or what the podcast is, including the name, obviously Reptiles Research. Um, are you calling it Reptiles Research Podcast or? Yeah. Yeah. A very original, which is, <laughs> as it is on the tin. Keep basically. it streamlined, man. Yeah, basically. So the Reptiles and Research podcast is basically going to be hosted by me, obviously me and Ellie. Um, our plan is to look at species diversity in the hobby. This was obviously spurned on by seeing a lack of it at, at Donny as well. Um, our plan is to get on keepers and breeders of those niche and nerdy oddball species that aren't common in the hobby and highlight them. Get them, give them a chance to highlight their species, talk about why it's great and why it's a good pet, and also highlight to people that want these things where to go to get them. Mm. As in a bid to try and increase this diversity again in the hobby, um, and have dedicated episodes each each week to these like weird and wonderful species that nobody may not even know about if they're just stuck in their little uh, leopard gecko or royal python bubble. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic, and and Ellie, obviously, you t- or Liam is already a content creator on YouTube, so this was probably an easy step for him to to go to making a podcast. Did he have to convince you pretty hard to be involved in this project? Because going on YouTube can sometimes be a little bit scary. I know when I first started the channel and the podcast, I was terrified. Did you have any of those worries? Yeah, <laughs> I'm very much like I'm very introverted. I literally have kept myself to myself. Um, but for a while, since I left my master's, I mean, I've 
got like a couple of published articles I felt like I was missing giving that information being a part of that research and then it was kind of like well this is a way to be a part of it if that makes sense mm-hmm. so oh, yeah it definitely makes sense and I'm the same way. I'm very introverted. Uh, I'm I'm someone that likes to be in it. Like even going to the expo yesterday, I'm like that was just way too many people for me in a short period of time. You know, I need to t- take a nap after that. So I, I'm so happy. That's what's great about podcasts and YouTube is you can produce content in the comfort of your own home and introduce it to people. You know, especially if you're someone that's maybe more or less or less likely to to go out and do it. So so that's really cool. Is it going to be mainly conversations between the two of you, or do you plan on bringing guests in, or or what's the structure plan? So the structure plan is to have guests on of those keepers and breeders of those species to come on and we can get them um, and pick their brain sort of thing. But we're not afraid to obviously have episodes between us, like experiment with what we have, the morph video or the gut loading episode that we did. Um, so the main target is to get guests on. Um, but if we want to just do a topic between us, we will. And then for those who are listening, the audio will be available on the Animals at Home Network. So if you're listening to any of the podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple, whatever it is, that will all show up there. And then the the actual video version of the podcast will be all on the Reptiles and Research channel. So if you want to watch the video, I always get amazed at how many people actually like watching podcasts, but there's thousands of people out there that like watching them. So you can watch it on the channel. I know you've already recorded one episode Maybe, Ellie, do you mind just giving a quick rundown of the, the episode that's already out? So um, we both, um, as part of my master's and as part of Liam's um, degree, did studies to do with um, gut loading and bug nutrition. So um, it was us discussing the literature that has come alongside. I think it was mainly focused on crickets because that's the one that's been um, most studied. But it was us going through um, the science of gut loading. Mm, excellent. And then... As far as uh, in the future, Liam, do you have episodes that are already lined out or have you recorded a couple that are, or what what are some things that people can look forward to in the future? So as of today, um, later on in the day, we've actually got Chaz from Snakes and Alice coming on to record the very first guest episode. We thought that would be the perfect guest to come on who's all about species diversity and finding all these local breeders for his business. So I think that would be the the perfect ship launch episode of someone talking about why it's important for species diversity and this and that so Chaz is on tonight and then after that we're going to start reaching on to more people we've got a uh, list of people we want to have on so now it's going to be just reaching out to them and then francis we'll have francis on a million times just wind them up and let him go so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just give one or two questions and then just sit back and and for Chaz, <laughs> depending on depending on how you want your podcast to run with with um, the swearing, <laughs> you may have to edit <laughs> edit Chaz. You'll you'll find out the hard way. But usually about the halfway through, he'll start talking like a northerner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it becomes fun to edit unless you don't want to edit. That's cool too. Um, there there was another question I was gonna have. Uh, species diversity oh yeah he, and he i know he just recently got some bolins pythons and it looks like at his shop so you'll have to ask him about those or i hope you ask him about those because that'll be pretty fascinating to hear about we have one as well oh oh so my shop, boss went to well, yeah my boss went to the same place to collect them and they both bought one each so i was like playing with that yesterday i was like i held that in my hand so like, it's the most expensive thing i've ever held <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's as expensive as a car do you know how much they paid for it or is that not allowed to ask I know, but I won't, I won't say it's not none of my business to put that out there. Yeah. Do you, is it for sale? It is for sale. Yeah. So you can tell for, us how much it costs. Uh, how much it's, it's, for. it's up for, I think, seven, seven, nine, nine, nine or something. So, so, so eight, eight grand, eight, I think. 8,000 pounds. So it's there's, like, there's also a croc monitor for sale. So I might be conflating both of their prices because I got told both at once. So, no, I, either, I, I, either or, it's like the just under 10 grand anyway so yeah yeah i saw somebody throw around the eight thousand number so that 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 might have been for another shop but i don't know so that that seems to be the going rate so that's yeah that's expensive so that's amazing i i'm really excited and i'm trying to think if there's any other information people will know, need to know about the podcast it's going to be available on, on reptiles and research youtube channel as well as on the animals at home network do you have a are you, are you going to try to do one a week that is the plan the whole point is that the reason that we were I thought I was quite desperate to start it was that the videos that I currently make on the channel, they take way longer to actually produce than than I can keep up with actually working in a shop as well as doing the videos. So it's something that is also impactful and value-based to give. Um, 
without me having to not be able to keep up with a highly researched, high production video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you finally figured out it's easier to have other people talk for you on the channel. <laughs> yeah, you've got a, you got a good thing going on over yeah. it. <laughs> it took me about four videos and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this might be easier. And, and Ellie, how are you feeling about it? Are you excited about it? Or is it some, a project that you're looking forward to on a weekly basis? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn. And I think I'm going to, like by the end of it, come up with a list of things that I want. I think it's going to be a bad thing for me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you may end up with a with a mini zoo in your room. Are there any yeah. species like right off the top of your guy's head that you can think of that you absolutely want to cover? Things that you think that sh should be in the hobby that aren't? Or oh yeah, can you tell? Um, us? <laughs> basically, all the anoles. There's a, there's a there's a an old breed that's got a huge diverse collection that he's producing and selling. So we want to have an anole episode. Um, some of the more obscure geckos we want to try and do. There's like a Namibian like spade foot gecko that's really cool. Um, we want to have an episode on things like sand snakes, which is where Francis comes in. Um, things like the scorpion geckos I'm desperate to own. So I want to find, we want to find someone in the UK that's doing that. And also, what is it the one that you really want, Ellie? It's the, those giant blue beauty nose. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we'll find someone producing them as well. Cool. Is there any other on the list, Ellie, that you that you're looking forward to covering or hoping to cover? Um, some there's like um a couple of chameleon species that I really, really desperately want to not only find who is actually producing them, but yeah. <laughs> what what are some so, of those species? Um I'm awful with the Latin name, the little holly lie ones. Um, and then I would love to find someone who's doing passing chameleons mm, because okay, cool yeah awesome well i think everybody's going to be obsessed with this podcast i cannot wait to continue listening to it the first episode that on, on gut loading was fantastic so i can't wait to see you guys progress and, and and build the podcast into something great is there any final words you guys want to say before we let leave people to your episodes uh give us a chance while we find our podcast and links <laughs> and uh, we'll see where we are on episode 80. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Before we started recording, everybody, I told them that I didn't start feeling comfortable recording a podcast until I probably got to episode 80 or 90. So they, they have a lot, you know, a lot of work to do to get there, but it, you are, the first episode already sounded very polished and, and, uh, you'll get better and better and it gets easier and easier as, as you go through it. So I'm super excited. And uh, like I said, I want to keep this episode short. So we just give people a quick taste of what to look for and then go to, to your podcast and listen from there. Is, are, are you planning on doing releasing on a specific day or are you just going to try to get it out on, at a certain time? With our schedule, it's just, yeah. If it, when it comes out, it comes out because <laughs> that's the only yeah. way to do it. Yeah. That was the same as me Bef before the baby. I'm like every Sunday. And then as soon as the baby came, I'm like, Whenever it happens, it happens. <laughs> that, that's how it goes. Well, thank you both for joining me on this bonus episode. And like I said, I'm so looking forward to watching the show develop. And I'm happy that it's uh, underneath the umbrella of the Animals at Home Network. And it's going to be a fantastic project. So thank you for being here. And thank you for producing great content. Thank you for having us. We'll see where yeah, it goes. Thank you. All right, that is the end of that bonus episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm not sure if I said at the beginning through the intro, but if you're looking for more information on the podcast, make sure you head to animalsathomenetwork.com. There you'll find all the show notes and everything for each podcast that is available on this network. I hope you are as excited about the Reptiles and Research podcast as I am. And if you're looking for more information on them, make sure you go to animalsathomenetwork.com. The top right-hand corner, hit the menu, and then go down to the Reptiles and Research tab. That will bring you to their page and all the episodes that they will be published or that they will publish will be on that page. And again, as I said through the intro, if you want to watch the video version of their podcast, make sure you head to the Reptiles and Research YouTube channel, but also subscribe on any audio platform, whether that's the Apple podcasting platform or Spotify or any other platform. There, all the audio will be condensed underneath the Animals at Home Network code. So if you go to that, if you've searched Animals at Home Network, subscribe, you'll find all the audio for everybody that's recording podcasts under this network. And I think that is it. I will see you guys in the next episode of my podcast.